hello everyone and welcome to another video again we're doing 20 videos in 30 days a lot of time a lot of effort if you have a little time just hit the subscribe button and don't forget to leave a comment um we're trying to grow the channel thank you to everybody who's been supporting us so far well today's a different video if you saw from the timestamp today's a little longer a couple people suggested that we should try a video essay style format a longer video i'm not really big into the longer videos but just to give it a shot just to see if this is something that the viewers like or something they want to keep going on today we're going to talk about alpha males and how i believe it is fan fiction for certain types of outcasts of males i think the genesis of this video really started when i was watching the debate between sneeko on the fresh and fit podcast and in the middle of the interview um i think one of the hosts went on a little tangent like a really long tangent simply trying to explain you have to have hard work to achieve your goals and what anyone ever play pokemon you do the fucking rare candy trick mm -hmm. where you get like 99 rare candy and you take two pokemon you take one that's a level like five another one level five you train one by going to the elite four multiple times <laughs> He went through the fights and fought the elite four 120 times his stats are going to be way better so no offense like i took i'm nerdy myself you can see in the background there's an anime picture in the background alpha male and the way that they describe alpha males wouldn't consider that to be top top g or in the way whatever way they call it an alpha male and how they described it will look down on him ranting on about a video game about pokemon and trying to use that as a description of hard work and then i was really thinking about it and i remember interviews in which Sneeko was talking about how he was an outcast as a child. There are a lot of video essays about him and how when he was younger, he used to be by himself talking about deep political subjects, something that you wouldn't see from someone his own age. And then I also remembered that Andrew Tate himself has talked about how he was bullied, how he regularly struggled with kids in school and how he used to be bullied on the bus. Kids who were maybe nine or 10 who used to pick on me from behind, right? And he used to pick on me on the bus all the time. In the middle of the interview, it really hit on me that every single one of these alpha male podcasts were social outcasts. They weren't traditional kids. They weren't kids that had lots of friends in school. These were the kind of kids that, that these weren't the prom kings of their school. These weren't the social butterflies. And it made me really think, in the area, women consider alpha males, they consider people who are the leader of the pack. People who are leaders of their peers. I don't get that vibe from any of them. And I was thinking about it. That the one area in our life where alpha male could probably make any sense is school because we're forced there and there's herd mentalities in school and for some reason the one area of our lives in which you can have like a true office none of them were at the top of the of the food chain not one of them thrived in an environment where a natural alpha male would have naturally thrived when andrew tay went on big brother and even in big brother he himself was not a natural leader. So right never, now with the dynamics that are going on in the house, I definitely think Marco's gonna be the better choice. If we don't to fuck people. Well, we're gonna do a vote, up. we're gonna do a vote on this one. Yeah, Marco. yeah. He was quiet, he was timid, he let people talk over him. Like things you wouldn't see from someone who's a natural leader. There's no situation where I've seen any of these self-proclaimed authors, people who preach this alpha storyline, have I seen them in an area where they've actually established themselves as an alpha? Which brings into the question, why are so many people who aren't natural alphas, who don't naturally fit the description of what should be an alpha, claiming to be an alpha? I think my theory is like fan fiction. It's them preaching the idealized version of themselves. This alpha male is who they want to be and not who they actually are. It is the Wattpad version of what they want to be real. Like how, how we all have fictions, fictional stories of this or that or fictional love story i think this is their fictional love story the fictional version of i want to be this person so i'll scream to the world that i am and maybe if i scream it long enough enough people will believe that i am especially with the people in fresh and fit both of them are a complete nerds both of them love to assert their powers in the position of their podcast or or how they down talk to women in, in the environments they control. But have you ever seen either of them in an environment where they're not the one in power, where they're not the one in control? They tend to be timid, they fall back, they don't assert the diamonds that they portray to claim when they're not in a position of power. Them being social outcasts also led to their beliefs. I'm not gonna say it on YouTube to not get any flags or nothing like that, but there are certain types of kids that have done bad things to school 
and almost all of them have come from being social outcasts. I think in the realm of social outcasts is where a lot of people fester radicalized ideologies. I think that really plays into why they have such strong beliefs and why they believe certain things in certain ways. Because I think that they've been kept away from normal social interactions to keep them from, from developing traditional normal views on humans and life and interactions and putting value on things like women and people or having a modernistic views because they never had to deal with positive social interactions like if you even look at some of their beliefs there's no way you genuinely believe women having instagram is cheating if you grew up in a regular social interaction you just don't those are kind of weird beliefs that you only grow up if you don't regularly interact with women on a daily on your formative years i'm sure they have money now that they have women their, their beliefs have already been hardened through their life but i think if in their formative years in their high school their teenage their middle school years if they had regular traditional interactions they would have more value on women than claiming things like if a woman had instagram is cheating or andrew tate I like it. If you had read the description of his original site, he said that does a woman really love you if she's not willing to put her body on the cam to take care of both of you? I was like, there's no way you have that belief if you grew up with regular traditional social norms. There's no way you think that a woman doesn't love you if she's not willing to sell herself on cam for you. Like, if she doesn't love you if she's not willing to be one of your many girlfriends. Like it, These are kind of the beliefs that you only really grow in like ostracized communities. I think a lot of them are openly aware that some of the alphaness of their, their nature isn't real. I think almost all of them openly admit there's performative natures in, their, in, in the way they present themselves. Andrew Tate is open about the fact that that a lot of the boisterousness, the loudness, all of it is for show. They say they believe what they believe, but a lot of everything else is just a show. So a lot of this alpha male persona they're pushing out is because they want people to believe they're an alpha and not because they truly are one on the inside. And another thing to reconsider that especially around men i remember that they love to push their weight on women but i think the, the nature of being offered is you can offer in front of everyone they don't challenge any other men they don't say derogative things to other men but all they do is attack women i've never seen any of them in a public setting like in in a public setting in which they don't control challenge another man everyone who I've ever seen the claims to be offered has never gone to a general public space in which they do not control like a, a, a studio of their own had that they have bodyguards and see them assert their own dominance or assert that themselves as the leader in those kind of situations that's why to me all of this is like very fan fiction it is a story that they've written to themselves and they're trying to force on everyone else to believe like i want to be this I w I've dreamed of myself being this because it makes up for the person i was when i was a child i feel like a lot of this People that are pushing this off a male persona is their way of dealing with the trauma they had when they were younger. And like they're trying to push this made up story into, into, in, into the atmosphere, hoping that a lot of people believe it. When I was poor, I dreamed of being rich. This is that same kind of nature. They were pushed over when they were young. So now they're, they want to be in a position where they can push back. But I think the difference between money and uh, weight is that there's hard evidence that like is undeniable. If you have a couple of M's in your bank account, you have money. So there's hard proof. And similarly with um, weight, when you lose weight, it's visibly there. So you can say, oh, I lost this weight. But with like an alpha mentality, if you were timid and you were weak as a younger, there's no way for you to proclaim that you've become this man without you screaming at the top of your lungs to the first broadcaster or anyone that can listen that you are that said i am this like that's your only way of showing the world that i have become this person that i wasn't when i was younger that i've developed into this bigger thing this more manly thing as i've envisioned since i was a very young age that i've become that man so i need to tell everyone everywhere that i am that and i need to show everyone that if i do it they can do it too and then they don't realize that their views are warped their views are not the views you should be spreading because there's a lot of social harm a lot of damage in what they're throwing out there there's a lot of influence in their voice not realizing that you might be saying this from your perspective but you're influencing really young people that are negatively affecting how they might grow up how they might influence the world no way are they calculating the harm that they're doing like i saw an interview with sneeko and they showed him a video of andrew tate's negative like negative influence and affecting teenagers and he was laughing like yeah yeah, that is kind of funny. That is based. And then you don't realize these are real people that are growing up 
with bad images, bad stereotypes in their minds. And here's the thing with Sneeko. I don't think Sneeko is as bad as Tate or the Fresh and Fit Boys. I think he's putting on a performance. I think that his ultimate goal is to be rich or to have money. But I don't think he's realizing the harm he's doing in the bigger thing. I think that if you look at any of his videos older than three years ago, he had put introspective thought into his commentary. And like, there's a lot of depth to what he says. I started sobbing and my father had to stop the car. He put his hands on my face, looked him in the eyes and told me, stop crying, don't worry about this. In 10 years, this will all have changed. The work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that prominently affects the world today occurred almost 50 years ago, and these issues are still as prevalent as ever. The most recent cases of Michael Brown and Eric Garner being victims of police brutality remind me eerily of Emmett Till's case. Now there's no, if you watch any video of him, there's no depth. Like, does anyone with a brain can realize the hypocrisies, the, the falseness, the the inaccuracies in all of his statements. I think he himself could point out the inaccuracies in his own statement if we put his videos in front of him three years ago and his younger self was watching who he is today. So, and I don't think people get dumber. Like, I don't think people get dumber that fast, especially that fast. I think a lot of Sneeko is performance because he has some drive in himself that he wants to be really rich and he thinks this is the path that will lead him to being really, really rich. Famous YouTube vloggers are generally arrogant, annoying motherfuckers who will run around and hold their camera in front of anything for a couple thousand more clicks. So it didn't surprise me at all when this dude ran around Japan like a goddamn 13 year old in dick sporting goods. <laughs> but when Rice Gum did it, it just made me sad. Listen, Rice Gum, man to man, Asian to Asian. There's thousands of little Asian boys looking up to you. And there's not a lot of role models for us growing up. And there's not a lot of role models for us growing up. And I, th and I think that's really interesting to me in this whole topic too is Tate's constant need for reaffirmation that he is the guy. If you watch any interview with Tate, constant, constant brag now, he's the top G. How he's made it, how he has money, how he has cars. Like if you ask, challenge him in any way, his retort is that I have this, I have that. And that's what it shows the shallowness of it all for him and that the need for constant information shows that he, that this is something he lacked and he wants to let everybody know that he has it like anyone who is truly great doesn't need to shout scream at the top of their lungs that they're great like someone who is truly on top someone who's truly respected someone who's really a top g would honestly would move in silence they wouldn't be bragging they want everyone to know that they're talking in the end of the day if anyone who's truly on top wouldn't want a target on their back he isn't the man he wants to be he's not truly on top that's why he has to portray this image that he's on top for his own central ego what i find interesting is that andrew tate himself noted how men lie guarantee that 99 percent of men are lying at least 80 percent of the time really that's a bit bold i i think it's true because i think that so men are liars men are liars Women are correct. Men are liars. Women wear makeup because men fall in love with what they see. And men lie because women fall in love with what they hear. Men are liars because men are in constant competition with other men. And they have to find a way to be competitive. And the easiest way to be competitive is to lie. How men lie about their status. And if you really look at him, it kind of reflects on himself. Because honestly, mathematically, the numbers he puts out doesn't make sense. He loves to brag about how his people, his students are making money, but there's little evidence of his students making money. He loves to brag about having 100,000 active members, and mathematically that doesn't make sense. The price point of $50 for a monthly subscription just to go on a Discord is too much for it to be realistically, to be, for it to be a realistic number. A lot of what he says are flat lies. He admits himself that men will lie to gain further status in life. If you actually look at uh, 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 his Hustlers University, he brags about the men of status that are in the video. It's him, his brother, and another weirdo magician guy. Like I told you, there's no one, there is no big equity finance guy. There is no billionaire who came up the hard way. There is no uh, a hardworking Joe who made a ton of money that's respectable in his community. Like it's just a bunch of three weirdos. Like I said, if he really was this man making tons and tons of other people rich he would have testimonials of actual wealthy people actually successful people as a testimonial to why he should join it he actually never goes into detail of anything in hustlers university because he himself knows the scam because he himself never goes into how the success is made or who he's made successful from it and here's the, um, the thing that i've thought about too if there was a such thing as a real alpha in real life like there really was an alpha in real life it wouldn't look like them. Anyone who was the top of a social hierarchy would have social skills to not just influence men, but women. If there was a real alpha, they wouldn't know how to influence 
both genders. They wouldn't be going out of their way to speak divisive languages. They would try to lead in both. Even their rugged version of the alpha male, the fictional version that they have going on in their head about what an alpha would be, even that misogynistic version wouldn't be screaming at the top of his lungs divisive rhetorics because in the end of the day even that misogynistic guy who just using women to control women you aren't controlling women by telling them their property you aren't controlling or manipulating women by telling them they're less than the manipulative alpha who is truly an alpha would be saying things to manipulate the narrative to think he was a good guy like i told you even the evil version of the alpha male that they have like fantasized and they put on this pedestal wouldn't be saying the things that they are saying because that version of an alpha would also want to be in control of women as well just thinking about it i look about stars who are actually popular in high school i look at dwayne the rock johnson who was a male athlete or i look at other celebrities who were like they were natural leaders every single one of them today know how to navigate in the space of both men and women like i think if there really was an alpha they would probably look something in the nature of what the rock is in which that he is loved by everyone and that he knows how to say and what to do to navigate and be popular among all all people and not just a bunch of 14 year old incels like i think that's what an alpha would generally look like those who rose to the top of the social ladder without like family money or without just those people know how to communicate with all people they know how to navigate how not to be canceled how not to understand the nature of how people will react to what they say and how to manage that and how to put himself in the ladder in which that he is the most loved among all and that is why i don't think if there ever was a true alpha male they would not be in the alpha male podcast sphere they wouldn't be in the manosphere if there ever was such a thing as an alpha male they wouldn't be in the in the red pill space they wouldn't be there i think everyone who lives on the red pill um internet bubble none of them would probably be considered real offers if they were actually put to the test if you look at any of these people sneeko andrew tate or um the fresh and fit guys or someone or anyone in that little bubble if you remove their money if you start them off fresh like in and you threw them in an environment like what a, especially men because they feel like they, they, they tend to cower whenever there are other men around if you like if you put them in a in, in a situation in which they have to thrive i don't think any of them would naturally rise to the top if was if money wasn't in the equation like if you remove the money and told them hey we put all these men in this room let the alpha be decided amongst yourselves and you couldn't use money or previously get influence on there not a single one of them would rise like they, they naturally do not command presence of respect their respect is i got bugattis I get girls or this whatever they name it is always superficial I think a good comparison is to say like alpha males are the he-man versions of themselves alpha male is a version like they are the cowardly little one who couldn't do anything by themselves in their mind the alpha male is the is the magical power that made them strong brave courageous everything that they could not be when they were growing up and this is something that a lot of people might not hear, might not like to hear, is that a lot of what they're saying is true. I think that's how they gain their popularity. That they'll say grains of truth that a lot of society is just not willing to admit. There's some harsh truths in life that they're willing to admit. And then they take it really, really into really dangerous places. Also, I really think that the nature of society, especially things like TikTok, that promote controversy has to be addressed so if we're not constantly giving um the most far right or far left people the most influence and giving them the most reward according to the algorithm we could probably see better influences i think a lot of times we're blaming andrew tate and we're blaming far right guy or far left guy when in reality we should be blaming the algorithm for rewarding them for saying this i guarantee you if sneaker could have found a way to make money being a middle guy because if you look at any of sneeko's old videos it was him saying he wanted to be a comedian he wanted to make artful videos but at the end of the day are him like i noticed myself you're not making money making artful videos he made his own status from saying the most outlandish things i most people don't realize a lot of what radicalizes this these fairy tales these fan fictions is the algorithms of these social platforms themselves the algorithm does not benefit middle ground it does not benefit 
the norm. It benefits the most outlandish, the most strangest, the most loudest, the most disruptive. And we have to question how do we address the algorithm, which I think a lot of people aren't addressing. They're addressing how do we attack a symptom of the algorithm and not the actual algorithm itself. There will be another Andrew Tate. There will be another Fresh and Fit. There will be another Sneeko. For everyone they ban, someone else will say something outlandish. The algorithm will give them all the views. They will get the platform and the new one will rise again. It's like a never ending cycle that I don't think is going to change soon. I think we have to find a way to reward good art. We have to find a way to reward people that are working hard and like doing things that aren't controversial but still beautiful, still creative, still artistic. And then what are your thoughts on this? Like I feel, I feel like I would love some of you guys input on why you think that such radicalized ideas become popular. Why? A lot of men are gravitating towards this fan fiction of this alpha male, even though they themselves are truly not that. These are just thoughts that I've had thinking about it recently. But I told you this is this is just my opinion. Um, let me know if you guys like this style. It's a little bit longer than I would normally voluntarily choose to do. Less editing. Do you guys like this? I've added some mood lighting, uh, different lens, and all that. Uh, for everyone who made this far, thank you for making this far. It's a, it's a lot of video. I, to, I know we don't even watch videos this long, but thank you guys. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, join us. It would be nice if you guys come back and watch another video. Um, I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.